everyone. Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another Wednesday Live. I am just setting up my comments here so I can say hi to all of you. So be sure to do that. Uh, I thought I would hop on just a minute or so early just to give everyone a chance to get on and to say hi to any of you early birds who are on already. So be sure and send me a hello. Okay, there's Kathy and Teresa. Hello. I'm just seeing my comments starting to come in now. Kathy, hi from Texas. Hello. I bet it's hot there. It's been hot here in Oregon. I think we had, I think it was 90 yesterday and it's going to be pretty hot today too. But you know what? I'm not complaining. I love the sun. Hello, Nell. Hello, D. How are all of you? Thank you for joining me. I have some exciting news, you guys. I'm gonna wait just a couple minutes to make sure everybody gets on, um, but I can't wait to show you um, what I have for you guys today. So exciting. Hello, Allison from Germany. Hello, Judy. Hello, Georgia. Georgia is in the house. Talented, artistic Georgia. She is amazing. Hello, Roberta. Hello, Erm. Hello, Sheila. Uh, so many of you, I recognize your names. Thanks so much for being so loyal to us. I see you on here over and over again. And we just, you know, we talk about it all the time. Kim and Kendra and I, we all talk about it. Phil, Joel, uh, we just appreciate all of you so much. Uh, spending your day with us, uh, commenting, um, supporting us all these years. Um, it's just the best. Uh, hello to Crystal. Hello to Jane. How are you? Hello to Terry. Uh, Kimberly Ann is in the house. Okay, you guys. So Kimberly, uh, my daughter who is currently in Canada, she um, is extremely talented. She is an artist. She is the one in the family with the sense of humor. And if you guys uh, want to laugh, uh, she has started she has started an Instagram account. It's called um, Coffee Doodle Do. And uh, she is illustrating and animating what she sees in her coffee cream. So if you guys want to laugh every morning, go check her out on Instagram. Uh, I literally laugh out loud every time I see what she has done. She just started it. So like I said, if you want to laugh in the morning, and me, I'm such a coffee-aholic. Uh, I love coffee. I really can't start the day without it. Only I don't have cream in my coffee, so I don't think I can animate mine. But uh, she does. So pretty funny. Coffee doodle do. Check that out on Instagram. Uh, hello, Erm. Hello, Renee. Renee is on uh, hello to Amy Moore. She says hi to the Krebs family. Thank you. They all say hi back. Uh, probably they are all on. Um, it is, is it 10 o'clock now? 10.02. Okay, you guys, uh, let's get going. I am so excited to uh, start showing you this new watercolor release. So today, and actually a day early, the official release isn't until tomorrow when the newsletter comes out. However, you guys that are on you on uh, the Facebook, you get to see it first. So this is a brand new line. There are four uh, stamps in this series, and that's what I'm going to show you today. And by the way, there is so much coming out new for watercolor. I think I have doubled uh, what I normally put out this release, but you know what? It's just so fun. It's hard to know when to stop. So. I am going to be on live every Wednesday for a while in the coming weeks. I'm going to be on live same time, 10 o'clock a.m. Uh, Pacific time. I'm going to be on live so that I have enough time to go through all of these new uh, things that I have released. Make sure that you understand how to use them and um, that you understand exactly what they are and what and and what my intention was when I created them. So I am going to do that and I will I will come back on at the end and kind of go over all of this too. So let me introduce this new line to you. It's called Foundations. And the reason it's called Foundations, it's kind of like, um, it's really similar to the simple scenes that I did, more for landscape. This is sort of the building blocks, the, um, sort of the starting point, the foundation for still life. And I absolutely love these. These, This was one that I had a hard time stopping at four. So I did stop at four, but let me, I could explain this to you for an hour, but let me just show you what I mean. 
And I'm going to show you the stamp and then I'm going to show you what uh, my intention is for it. So here is one of them. Now, first of all, uh, you'll notice how big this is. And I'm, I'm just holding it up with, uh, with the palette so that you can kind of see what it is. I'll try not to get any glare on here. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is it's much bigger than anything else I've done. And the reason for that is I really want to make this line frameable art. I want you to be able to frame this. This, this will go into a five by seven frame or an eight and a half by 11 or eight by 10, excuse me, with a mat. But this will be frameable art. Now you can see that everything is left out. So it's sort of like filling in the blanks. Uh, it, the composition is there. And of course you can change it up so much just by changing the color and everything. Also notice that you can use parts of it just like you can with any other stamp. You could use maybe just these two parts, maybe this part up here, maybe just this. So uh, it will be extremely versatile. So let me show you now what this looks like uh, when you actually create the image. So let me just let me just put this on here again. Now this is a completed. Uh, let's let me line this up here so you can kind of see. I thought this would be helpful to see it. Now this is a completed image, so you can see I framed this. This is a um, a five by seven frame, and you can see how big this image is in there. It is so fun, you guys. This is a blast, and honestly. Uh, good for beginners and those of you who have been doing this for a long time because you can certainly change it up. So let me take this off of here so you can see where I just filled in. So now here's the actual um, the actual painting and you can see where all of that areas have filled in. So basically if you have uh, some flowers and foliage you can you can do this painting uh, with just your flowers and foliage. Okay, so let me show that to you again, what it actually looks like. And then I will, uh, I'll show you the other, the other three also. So here's actually what it looks like. It's very bare bones, it's foundation. So a building block, that's actually what it is. So um, <clears throat> I'm gonna go through this one. We're gonna create that, uh, that image. We're gonna put all the flowers and foliage in it. So uh, let me see your thought. Now I've just been talking to the camera, so I haven't actually been looking at your comments. So. Um, let me see what you guys are gonna, you guys, this is so much fun. It really, really is. And I love the simple scenes because it gives you a starting point. And sometimes that's the hardest thing to do. And yes, you can combine your stamps, but sometimes it's easier. And especially with these large images, I know some of you want to make large frameable art. And this is a great way to start doing that because it's not so intimidating where you have a giant canvas that you have to color. Uh, this is something that you can break down into smaller pieces, obviously pots, you know, uh, birdhouses, things like that, uh, things that are simple to do, all part of a larger combination. And of course, you can use bits and pieces. You can take parts off or you can um, add parts to it, clearly. Um, so let me uh, let me get my camera switched over. I see your co your comments, you guys. It, it this is so much fun. You will uh, you will love doing this, and and I'll try to slow it down when I'm um, when I'm actually doing the samples. Sometimes I get going too fast, and I'll try to slow it down. I know you can't follow along with me because you've not seen these before, so uh, I will try to slow it down. And then of course you can go back and um, and check these out. So let me get my camera switched around here first of all, and make sure I don't cut anyone off. Okay, so let me get this uh, switched over and centered. Now this is a really big, um, this is a really big project. So I want to make sure that uh, I'm on camera. So let me first tell, let me first show you what's in this line. Now here is here is the uh, this is the potting bench. This is the one that we're going to do today, and you can see that it is just full of blooms and flowers. Now, you could also make this fall. You can fill these containers with anything. So here's that, I, I think it really helps to have this palette on here. So here it is again, this, this is up close here. So backwards, here we go. You can put anything in here. You could put some pumpkins in here. You could put um, some fall stuff, you know, any anything can, can go into these pots. Uh, you can also add more to it. 
I mean, just so easy. So this is the this is the the potting bench. Now these are all available right now. So they are up and running. If you go to the website, you can put these into your cart right away. They are all ready to ship too. So we've been waiting a long time to get our product in and finally able to release these and show them to you. I'm so excited. So here is the potting bench. And then here is, now this one, I'm gonna tell you that these are all my favorite, but they really are all my favorite. How cute are these chairs, you guys? This is so fun. This is part of the reason I'm gonna come on every week because I just, I gotta go through all these. I gotta show you guys how to do all these. And you can see that all the basic areas, you know, these are all ready to just be filled in. So you can fill these in with anything that you want. Super easy to do. You could take just one here again. Now, by the way, these are all clear. And I think I, I you probably gathered that when I showed you, um, when I'm showing you this acetate, but these are all clear. So they're gonna be really easy to line up. And you can obviously just color part and leave part off. So they're really, they're gonna be really, really versatile and they are big. So it'll be really fun to do these and actually put them in a frame. So super fun. Now this one is called um, Foundations Chairs, of course. And here is a sample on the packaging that you can see just how to do it. But I will be going through, I will be going through these. Here is the next one. This one is called the wood table. And you can see here, it's got um, something on there. So here's the wood table. It's got all the pots, little watering can. You can just fill these containers up and this just gets huge. And you can make this as big as you want. So it would also be really cute for Christmas. So just picture uh, some Christmas fur boughs and things in here and maybe some light strung across here. Wouldn't that be so cute? A little, a little Christmas tree in one of these. Um, I'm just, I'm gonna have to do that for you guys. I'm gonna have to do that sample. But how cute is this? These, these were so fun to do. Okay, now I don't know, this might be my favorite, although I, I probably will say that they all are. This one is the door. And it's big too. You can see how big this is. And it's just waiting to be filled in. So let me show you. Here is the sample of the door. And I've put a little wreath on here. I've climbed the foliage up and around. I filled up all these pots. Uh, just so, so fun. And really, really going to be fun to uh, frame. Super fun. So here's this one. Here's a sample of this one. This is the wood table. And like I said, these are all available right now. You can you can go to the uh, you can go to the website. You can type in foundations or go to watercolor, and they will all be on here. It is fifty four thirty two, fifty four thirty three, fifty four thirty four, and fifty four thirty five for the potting bench. So you can go on there and just see all of these really really cool fun giant. Uh, images. They're so fun. It's one stamp, you guys. So it's all just one. And this is the one that we're going to do today. So let me show you what I'm using. And let me show you what I did to kind of start with this because this is, this is big. So this is a six by six piece of watercolor paper. So it's not our normal size. This is, you know, our normal size is this. So it's quite a bit bigger, uh, but we need it bigger because it's a giant big image. And it's just so, so fun. Now, I'm going to just, I think I need to maybe move my camera up a little bit. And then what I'll do is I will um, zoom in. But I want to make sure that I'm not off the, that I'm not off the page. Um, okay, so what I did was, you know, everything is done here except for the blooms, everything that goes into the pot. So what I did was I kind of went through all of my flowers and foliage and I put them on a palette like this so that I could see what I have. And I think that that really helped me to be able to look and see. So if you're, you know, a flower arranger, <laughs> you know that you put things that are, uh, shall that are lower in the front. And as you go out, you build things out and go further out. So it kind of gives you, you can kind of see where your long stems are. You can kind of see where your filler flowers are, things that would go, that would be smaller into the foreground. And then I have all of my foliage here too. So 
Now this is only about half of what I actually pulled out. The, the rest of them are already on blocks. Now if you've got a lot of extra little blocks, you could do that. You could just put them on your blocks and just kind of look at them and then just grab them because uh, there is really no right or wrong way as to what to put in these containers. And honestly, if you have just these two sets, you're fine. You're absolutely fine. You can fill up all of your containers. You can complete these projects with just these two. So it really, there really is no specific thing that you have to use. Now, I, I went ahead and pulled these out because I know some of you will wanna know what exactly I used. So I will, I will tell you that. Uh, now I know for sure, and you know what? I might, I could change it too, <laughs> depending on what I pick up. I am gonna change the colors out. So here's the color palette that I used. Here's that, here's that image. And I used some purples and I used some violets in here and some blues and some greens, of course. So I might change that up a little bit just to give you another idea. Um, but you know, and those of you who have been following Kendra, you could get your color wheel out. You can get your color wheel out and look at some color combinations and you can see what colors you want to use in your pots. Uh, that also is a little comforting before you get started to know exactly what you're doing. So here's what I used on that painting that I did. Uh, I used this long one. I used this one here. This is flower set two. So these two, um, did I use anything out of here? I think I did. I, I might've used these two or maybe I plan to use these two. Uh, maybe this one, uh, this one, uh, foliage set four. I think I used the two vines, the little grasses. I think I used everything in here, actually. I think I used every single one of these. And then uh, foliage set three, I think just the grasses, um, my two favorite long stem grasses in the, gar in the uh, wagon set garden wagon set I used I think the one going to the right so this one right here uh, the branches I think I used probably used the small one here but like I said you know the sky's the limit on this you can you can just use whatever you want so let's get to it because this is so fun and I think I can drop this down just a little bit and I will try to uh, see my <laughs> I'll try to watch my comments as I'm going. So I know Kim is on. I think Joel is probably on and uh, they're there to answer any questions. And I will get back on at the end. So uh, if any of you have anything at the very end you want to ask me. Um, okay. Uh, also, I will give this one away. So if anybody would like to have it, just in the comments sometime in the, during this demonstration, just tell me you'd like to have it and we'll pick a winner and I'll send it to you. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is, and honestly, you can do the pots first or you can do the flowers first, whichever you want to do. I would suggest that you start out uh, just by pulling the color out of the lines. That's always the starting point and it just sort of gives you that three-dimensional look. Uh, so that you can get started. Now, here is, I've stamped this off. Now, here's the first the first impression. I think it's a little dark, but you know, that's totally up to you. If you like to see the darker lines, that's totally up to you. There's nothing wrong with that. I stamped it off again, and I got a lighter version, and I do I do like that better. And I went ahead and stamped it, stamped it uh, just like I normally do, uh, mostly for space, because you have to use a platform, a stamp platform. It's so big that we don't have a block uh, that would fit. So I used my stamp platform and I just I just inked it up with the two colors that I always use. And that would be the dark blue and the dark brown. So the 565 and the 969. The 969 first, 565 second. And then I stamped it off. This is the first impression and this is the second and i really prefer the lighter version i don't like to see those heavy lines and i think this one uh, for me just just for my um what i like is the stamped off version okay so let's get going on here i've dipped my brush in water so let's get started by pulling the color out of the lines and because you know i'm using those two colors, you can immediately see that color come out. 
you know, always keep the color to the sides. You know, these are all contours. They're all contours. So they're going to have that highlight in the center. And this, these are just like any other pots that you've done, exactly the same. So you're going to pull the color out exactly the same way as you've done uh, with all the other pots that we have. and just kind of work your way around. You know, this is the beginning stage, so you don't really have to be too careful. What you want to always remember to do, and I, I don't say this enough times, but make sure that you are not coloring on the line. You don't trace the line with your brush. You're coming under it or next to it. And, and you're dragging that color out. So you don't want to trace that line. You're going to get a big, fat, ugly, uh, line if you do that. So you want to come underneath it or next to it. And next to it, you know, if you're doing something that's contoured like this, you're going to come in underneath and that's going to bring up this detail. And just kind of keep going. Work your way around. And you know, there's just, there's nothing to stress out with these because the composition, <laughs> the composition is already done. And so you could do a really nice framed art piece for someone special in, you know, just a few minutes. And if you've watched me at all, you know, that's a win for me. If I can do it in a few minutes, I am very happy about that. Okay, so you can see how much it's changed already just by pulling the color out of the lines and seeing that three-dimensional, seeing that three-dimensional look. And you can see the, the mix of color in here just by doing that. And you can see that I've pulled the color to the side, to the side. So I've drawn my brush along the line. So not on top of it. We're not tracing that line as we go around. We're pulling that color from underneath and letting it kind of bleed out. Okay, and that creates that, um, that dimension, that three dimension. Okay, so now we've got tons of space to add our flowers and foliage in. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that first. Uh, I love adding the flowers in. Now you can, you can color all of these pots, you can do all that detail first and add the flowers in second. It's totally fine to do that. It's absolutely up to you how you wanna do it. So I, what I do is I, um, I just take the stamp that I'm gonna be using. So here's the filler flower. And I've, I've used this several, several times in my composition. So I'm going to just take, uh, take some color here. This is, the, this is that dark blue. And I'm just going to start adding this kind of randomly around so that I get the color, uh, maybe a little bit here, maybe a little bit here, maybe a little bit here. And let's just put a little bit more over here. And then maybe I will uh, put some of it up here. And maybe some of it in here as well. And then what I, do, what I would do on, in this case, you know, with this huge, uh, this huge composition and this, this big painting, I would put everything in and then add the water so that you get a really nice blend of the colors. So let's change out the colors now. Let's stay with that same stamp and let's change out the colors. And let's pick some of this light blue. Now this is the number 526. And I'm just gonna use some of this in here just to change that out a little bit. And maybe just a tiny bit, maybe up here. So that's still the same, the same stamp. And I'm just kind of getting this in and, uh, and I am cleaning it off every time. So I've got, I've got both of those colors in right now. Let's just add a little bit of, um, let's add a little bit of yellow here. Maybe just in the background. And maybe just some up here, just to get some color in here. Okay, so now let's go on. Let's do this one here. And with this one, I'm just gonna take a piece of um, post-it tape and I'll just use it 
I'll just use it in different places. So like for this, for this one here, I'm gonna use this, this stamp that has the, uh, the grasses and the blooms, and I don't want that to stamp over the top of my, um, of my pot. So I'm just gonna ink this with some purple and some green, either green, doesn't matter what, which green it is, and just get this in here. Now I stamped that really low to the ground, so I'm going to just add a little more grass in here and get some green in there. Everything is an easy fix, you guys. It really, really is. Uh, okay, so let's start adding some, uh, let's add some vines in. And if it looks like I'm really jumping around, I really am. I'm really jumping around, literally. There's not any specific way that you have to do this. Really, you're just filling in, you're just filling in these containers. And let's put something in here. And, you know, don't be afraid to turn your paper, too, if you need to. You know, just turn it so that you can get your stamp. You're not cranking your, um, your hand around. And let's just add some more in here. Now, you can see I'm just using half of this. So just the tip. And as I go, I can add some more in here if I want to. No big deal. So now I've got this in here. So what to put in this section? How about if we put something like this in? Maybe some grasses. Let me see, how about this one? Where is that grass I'm looking for? Going the other direction. Whoops, that's going the wrong direction. Let's see, here it is. This one's going this direction. Okay, so let's put this in. And then let's put some grass up here. So here's that, here's that big grass. And I'm just gonna do my little purple flowers again, which I love to do. And I don't need a ton of that grass to show uh, because I've, I've already got these blooms in here, so that's no big deal. And let's put in, what should we put in up here? Maybe the little vines. Let's put these in and maybe a different green. And let's put some other grass in here. How about this green? And maybe these blooms. Maybe some blue. Up here. Let's see, how about some grass, some more grasses? This one. In here. And maybe some of this, this leaf. Let's put some of this in. I mean, think about what would be in your garden or your your potting shed and you know just kind of duplicate that you know your favorite flowers that are outside let's put in something else so maybe some more of this blue and as you go you'll kind of see where you need to add you need to add more flowers and more color. And let's go ahead now, I've got this pretty full, so let's go ahead now and um, one more. Let's put some of these in here. And maybe a few in here. 
Okay, so we've got these pots pretty full and I haven't added any long stamps. I'll do that later once I've got all the, got the water and everything on. So let me move all my stamps out of the way and let's start doing the water here. So I'm going to start with the lightest colors. That would be the yellow here. And then go to the blue. And blue in here. And you know, you're just you're just dabbing. So it's it's all the same technique. You know, nothing has changed. We're doing everything the exact same way. And then the grasses, of course, and you're just dabbing. But you see what I mean by adding the water later? You're kind of getting a really nice blend of these colors. And it, it kind of looks more like a watercolor, I think. I just love that um, more of an abstract look. You know, when you when you add the water to it, you know, the neat thing about this is that it changes the shape. It changes the shape of the stamp so that you can't tell it's the stamp. You just can't tell that at all. It looks like a little painting, which is exactly what we want. And you know, you get, you have a little of the same color. So, you know, I did the blue and I jumped in over here and I've got a little bit of that blue on my brush still. And I just think that adds a lot. You know, don't be afraid to, you know, pull this color to the outside. You know, there's probably a shadow, some kind of shadow behind here. So you can get that you can get that in here. You can show that uh, just by kind of blending this color out, bringing it out. And I'll, I'll hold this up when I finish this part. But these just, you know, they're just so much fun. I mean, I think I say that about everything, but honestly, these are so much fun. These are so much fun to do and really quick. And I want to see you guys frame them. I really do. Frame them, put them, put them in a kitchen or, you know, on your desk or how cute would they be in a bathroom or in your craft room? It'd just be so cute. Okay, so here's, here's all these florals. You see how they kind of all blended together? Kind of all blended together just because I waited to put the water and now if you like them to be more um, separate, you know, again, your own style, the more that you do of this, this type of um, art, the more your own style will come out. Okay, so let's put some, um, let's wait on the long stems until we get the pots colored in and then we can put them in kind of as an accent. We'll be stamping over some of these pots, so we can do that at the very end. So let's go ahead and start adding some color onto these pots. So I'm just gonna move my water out of the way, make sure that my palette is in the screen. Make sure I'm not off the screen. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Okay. So let's get some color on here. I'm going to add some cool green. Cool green is uh, number 249. Uh, some warm green, 177. Um, let's add some blue, 526. Let's add some purple, 636. And let's add some dark blue, 565. And some brown, 947. Okay, so we didn't do, I didn't do the detail on the hat. Let's do that really quickly. And I'm just gonna use, you can use any flower, you can use any vine, or you can use any foliage on here. 
Um, let's just pick something here. So this is purple, and I'm just going to ink a couple of these and just stamp a little area like that. And then I'm going to stamp a little area with the foliage. This is just a tiny little one. And just put this in here like that. There we go. And then we can uh, we can add some detail. Uh, we can add some more detail once it's colored. So I'm mixing this warm. This is a warm brown. Did I tell you what color this is? This is a 947. This is just a warm brown. And you know, this is this is all up to you how you want to color these. So I'm just using this warm brown on this hat. Start out light, uh, leave the edge uh, with a highlight, and then stay in each section. It's really, really important. And you don't have to color the whole thing. Leave some, you know, always try to leave some white spaces. So let's keep going here and let's take some of this blue. I'm gonna leave this pot white, I think. So we never leave anything uncolored, even if it's white. And so we're gonna put some color on here, starting with the darkest area, which would be on the side. And you know, there's probably just a little shadow under this hat too. So let's just put that in. Like so. And let's um, let's make this one up here. Let's make this little shadow here. And how about this next one? How about a uh, green? Let's go with a green here. Now you can see I'm applying the color the same way that I pulled the color out of the lines. That would be from the darkest area to the lightest. And then you wanna always see that highlight that's in the center. Always wanna see that. Regardless of what, what color or how dark you're making that pot, you want to make sure that that highlight in the center is the lightest part. Shadow under there. And maybe, maybe we just put a little, I love putting these little details on the pots. I think it's becoming my signature. <laughs> my signature look is to put stripes on pots, but I just think they're so cute when you do that. Okay, so let's do another one here. How about a purple? Good idea. Do a purple one. So again, you're you're just applying the color just like that. Pinch your brush off, and then pull it to the center and let it just kind of fade out. And you'll notice, you know, if you're if you're watching, I'm really just kind of pushing the color around. I don't really stroke. I don't have strokes. I'm just applying the color and just kind of pushing it around. And then we always, you know, want to have this area, see under here, that's gonna be darker. Okay, so we've got our little purple pot in there. Let me hold this up so that you guys can see. How cute and simple. Just honestly, nothing to it. And it just looks like such a neat watercolor um, little painting. Just love doing these. So let's go on to this little wood box here. And maybe let's just do it white. So if it's white, it's going to have a shadow. See back in the back. And then we're gonna just kind of, you know, mess it up a little bit in the front so that it's not all white. It's gonna always have some kind of shadow or something going on. So now let's do the, um, Let's do this little watering can. What should we do this one? Maybe green again? I really like this cool green. I 
And maybe we can just do this kind of like a, a two-tone. We'll just do the color down here. See how that looks. Darker, always darker on the side. If you, if yours, if the sides of your contoured container are dark and the center is light, you're going to have a rounded container. It's going to always look round. You know, nothing has to be perfect. You know, the thing about watercolor is it's, it's very forgiving. It's all about, you know, the idea of things. So I'm going to add some color now onto this little shelf. Since it's white and it's kind of going back in the distance, same here. And let's add some color now to this little birdhouse. Maybe just a little green section here. And maybe a little brown roof. Always stay in each section uh, when you're coloring. You know, that is so important. Never drag your brush across any lines. You always want to color each section individually. And I'm just going to now, I'm going to darken in that opening. I'm gonna use the twin tone blue. You could use the brown too, either one, but you wanna make sure that this opening here is really, really dark and that will really pop out in this little, this little area here. And if we leave, we leave this white, this is going to be in the shadow here. So this will be blue. And then, you know, when you're doing any kind of a little perch like this, you always wanna put a blue line underneath. You see how that just pop that perch out? Just a, it's such a simple little thing, but it really, really makes a difference. You know, it, you don't have to color everything. I guess, you know, that's, that's also a really good thing to remember. You can leave things white. It's so cute to leave things white. It really, really is. Just be sure to put in some kind of shadow. You never want to leave things un, uncolored, especially white. So let's do this one too. Speaking of white, let's just do this white. And maybe something decorative on here. Like, I know, how about some stripes? Great idea. You know, when you're putting a stripe on too, make sure you're always putting a little bend bend in it because you don't want a straight line. That's going to make your pot look flat. And you know, it's all about making it look three-dimensional. So much about that. Okay, let's go with the green again. In here. Start on the sides, pinch off your brush, and drag that color over. And you can go really dark with these containers. You just make another pass. You just do it exactly the same way, only do it again. So start where it's the darkest, make another pass. Keep in each section, don't cross those lines. And then pull that color to the center. And then just put a little, you know, take a little blue and just put a little shadow underneath. Okay, so let's go on to the bucket. And we don't really have to do a lot here. We could, if you want to make this gray, you could add a little brown of the dark brown to the blue. So this is the 969. And you could add a little of this to the blue and you'll get a really nice, really nice light gray. Or you could just leave the bucket white. 
would be cute too. And again, same way, you guys, same way. Add that color where it's the darkest and drag it over. And the same, like we did here with this little shadow, you wanna always put a shadow any over a, um, if you're doing something with a handle, just start here at the top and just kind of bring that shadow underneath. You see how that just makes that look like it's popping out? Same as it does here, same idea. Okay, so let's do something else here and let's add some shadows in. And we can do that just by putting in a few little broken lines like this, just a, just a few little areas. Now you don't have to do this, but I think it will add a lot to your composition, especially, you know, down here. You want to put a, uh, a shadow underneath this little shelf. Same here, you know, these things will all be kind of hanging over. So you're gonna see a little shadow under there. Uh, same here. Just, you know, don't, over, don't overthink this. Just put a few little strokes down and, you know, honestly, you're gonna be good to go. You could always darken, you know, the corners of the shelf. You can always just kind of make sure those areas are a little darker. That's going to give you a little more dimension too. But honestly, that's that's about it. So let's put in some, let's put in a few long stems. Let's add a little more detail to this, this hat. A little band like that. Cute. Love it. And let's put in, let me move my palette out of the way now. Let's put in some long stems. <clears throat> Let's put in some detail like this one. So let me get a right and left here. Maybe something like that out here. These, these little things are sort of like accents. You would just kind of put these in kind of at the end just to add to a little more detail. And let's see, what else should we put in? How about this guy? And let's kind of mix it. Let's put some red in. Let me make sure that wasn't something else before I did the red. Make sure I get enough on there. And then the stem. Maybe a few in here. Just kind of adds a little flare, doesn't it? Kind of a shot of color. And I think we need some more red. Let's put a little bit up high. So let's take this little guy. And I'm gonna clean it off because I don't know what color was on it either. So let's do red. And I think, you know, we don't necessarily have to have much of the stem So let's just put some up here. And you know, as you go, you can kind of see where you need to add a little something more. And let's put, um, let's put something more onto this hat. I kind of feel like it needs a little more flair. So let's just take this now. There. That's better. 
Let me see, what else do we need in here? How about those little buds? Really like these little guys. I mean, you can just keep going on and on. You don't have to fill it up this much, but I don't know why I always get carried away and I end up with, you know, giant pots full of giant um, blooms. So I'm just gonna clean these off. I just have a white wet paper towel, but you can use a baby wipe too. And how about, let's see, what color should we do? Maybe red. How about red? Just kind of into red. And this one. It just, you know, when you add that water to it, it just kind of makes the color pop, doesn't it? I just love it. And then you can't tell that it's a stamp, you know, which is even better. Okay, I think this looks pretty good. The only other thing I would do is um, add some detail with my twin tone, but I really don't see anywhere that I could really... Um, add any detail if you see anything you know where you think you could really get something dark you know especially you know under an edge anytime you do that it really adds dimension you know always in between things you know under things like this But I think that looks pretty good, you guys. What do you think? This will be so fun. And like I said, I will be on, I'm just checking my comments here to see. Oh, you guys, I got lots of hearts. Thank you. Thank you, this is gonna be so fun. So next time, next week when I, um, I'm on, same time next week live, I'll go through one of the other um, foundations. So maybe the, maybe the chairs. The chairs will be so fun. And if you do get your set, I mean, you know, they're ready to ship. So it's possible you could have yours by um, by next week. You can certainly follow along with me. And of course, these will all be archived. They'll all be archived so that um, you can always go back and watch. Okay, so I'm just I'm just using my red and really darkening these little buds. Okay, so if you have commented that you would like to have this, um, I will I will pick a winner and we will get a message to you and get your get your shipping address. So let me switch my camera around. Okay, you guys, I'm back face to face. <laughs> um, I love I, lo I will go back and read all your feedback because I'm really really interested in your feedback and to see what you think about these they are so much fun and like I said you frame these frame this art because this is big enough that you could really put on a wall it is it would just be so fun and then of course try out some different things how cute would a southwest theme be I think that would be so cute to put some cactus and you know some blooming cactus in those pots i think that would be so cute and i don't even i don't even think i used everything i said i was going to use um today so honestly a few flowers and foliages will go a long way um jane <laughs> she says my bum is getting chafed from dancing on my chair i love it i love <laughs> that's so funny Oh, you guys are the best. Thank you so much. Thanks for all the hearts. Thanks for all the encouragement. It is just the funnest thing. And we always talk about the best people in this industry. You guys are the best. And this is, 
you know, you're, I know you're making these things because you want to give it away. You're putting it on a card and you want to give it away to someone and you want to encourage them. And you know, there's so many people that need a smile, that need something beautiful and to know that they're loved and thought about and encouraged. And that's what we do. That's what we all do. And it's so important now, you know, you can talk to somebody for five minutes and, you know, realize they're really hurting. There's a lot of lonely people. There are a lot of hurting people. And to send them something like this really, really makes a difference. We hear it all the time. So thank you for that. Thank you for, you know, your loyalty to us. Thank you for coming and being on with me for an hour. You spent an hour of your time with me. Thank you so much for that. And um, I will go back and read all of your comments and get your feedback. If you are interested in these, they are available right now on our website. So let me tell you the numbers again. 5434 is the wood table. So that's this one. It's one stamp and they're clear. Uh, the foundations, the chairs, 5432, that is this one. The potting bench, which we just did, that one is 5435. This one right here, 5435. And did I miss one? Which one did I miss? Oh, the door. You guys, maybe I should do the door next time. The door is so cool. 5433. This is so fun because you could change that wreath out. And I always think about Christmas. How fun would this be to, to, to do this at Christmas? You could do those pots really snowy with a few little branches coming out. A really pretty wreath on the door. I just think it would be so fun. Some holly with some little red berries. Oh, I think that would be so cute. And of course, change out the holidays, you know, change out the seasons. Uh, this one is 5433 Foundation Store. Okay, you guys. Um, thank you so much for following along with me. I will see you next week. I will be on next week. We will be posting a schedule of all of our upcoming lives. And I will see you all next week, next Wednesday at 10 o'clock. And I'll do another one of these. And there will be more watercolor to come. We will be releasing more watercolor over the weeks to come. Uh, we are doing it a little slowly because we want to make sure that I can show you how everything is made to work. So that when you get it, you understand what it's for and you have support. Some sort of video or some sort of, of support as to how to put it together. So thank you again. Thank you all so much, and I will see you next week. Check us out on our, our social media always. Check me out on Instagram, Bonnie Krebs Bible Journaling. Uh, obviously, the Art Impressions Facebook and Instagram. Check out our watercolor team. I cannot wait to see what Dee and Karen and Trisha do with all this new watercolor. They are amazing. We are so thankful for them, and all of you on the Art Impressions stamp group too. You guys are awesome. So thank you so much. I will see you all next week, 10 o'clock Pacific time.